Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Oh, okay. Julia, I was checking to see if we have audio. Thank you. You're welcome. Sure that you're not on mute. Oh, are you still on mute? Good afternoon, Chief.
Good afternoon, sir. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Good afternoon to everyone that's on. Um, we're just giving everybody a few more minutes to log in. Um, we had a little problem just now with the streaming, but we seem to have sorted it out. So we will start in a couple of minutes. Okay. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Unexpected ways. This was most afternoon, sir. All right. Eight five year old primary school kid in Lagos, whose mother allowed her sister's colleague, Mope Mamayua, to photograph her son. Misole Mope Mamayua was known as Mope. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Um, we welcome evening. you. Thank you for taking the time to be here. Before we start, 
let's deal with a bit of etiquette. Um, I will ask you to please make sure your microphones are muted, except for any time that you are speaking as part of the discussion with several people on. Um, we need to cut back on the background noise um, so it doesn't cause a disturbance. If you want to ask a question at any time, raise your hand um, to do that. You go to the reactions button at the bottom of your Zoom screen and click raise hand. Once you do that, um, Barton will indicate to me that you have your hand raised and we will call on you and then you can unmute your microphone and say what you have to say. Um, that way we, it will be orderly. And once you are finished, please mute your microphone then. You can keep your video muted or you can, un, um, or you can unmute that if you wish. That is up to you. But towards the end of the activity, I'm going to ask as many people as possible to um, open their video feed so that we can take a photograph for the event. Okay. Okay, so we will start this evening with a word of prayer. And I'm going to ask Martin to open us with the word of prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in our hearts we plan our course, but we pray that you establish our steps. I pray, God, that we seek your advice. Let us not make decisions based upon what we know, but let us act upon your wisdom. Please guide us, O oh Lord. We place this meeting in your hands. We place our hearts and minds in your hands so that you may direct us. And so, gracious God, we thank you again for this opportunity to call people to this meeting. We thank you for each and every one who is here today. You have blessed us with supportive people who seek the welfare of the Barbados Boys Scouts Association. Loving Father, we thank you most of all for being here in our midst this afternoon. Let your presence be made known and leave this meeting today. Thank you, Father, for we know that you're always here to support your people. We give you thanks and praise in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and Holy Spirit, and we all say, Amen. 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 All right, welcome again to everyone. Thank you for taking time on this Sunday evening to join us to discuss what is happening in the association and where we need to go in the coming year and how we plan to get there. <clears throat> Hopefully next year we can consider having a face-to-face -face town hall, but um, for now, we will stick with the virtual. Moving on to item three, brief report on the current scout year. Um, my apologies to those who were at Founders Day or watched the stream, because much of what I'm going to say was mentioned in the Founders Day report, but I really couldn't come up with a totally new report on things to say for what happened last year. As you are aware, scouting continued mostly in virtual format during last year. There were some face-to-face -face activities and one or two groups were able to meet face-to-face -face on a regular basis um, while keeping within the protocols. Despite that, we were able to retain 65% of our membership and that is based on registration that was paid. 
um, not sorry, not that was paid, registrate, persons that were registered because everybody did not pay registration as was noted in the notice that went out to deal with registration. However, I am not sure how much of that 65% was actively meeting, uh, how many were just registered, renewed their registration, and were meeting sporadically as opposed to on a weekly basis or at least uh, more than once a month. Um, but I will have to go based on the statistics that we received at headquarters. As we at headquarters, we use this period to continue the work that we started to revise um, our programs and how we operate here at headquarters. We continue the transformation to a paperless system. As everybody know, last year's registration was completely paperless. The year before, we had a dual system where initially the forms were scanned and emailed in, but afterwards the hard copies were sent to headquarters later on. This year, we went with strictly um, online, and that's a system we will be using now um, going forward. Not just for this, but such things as camp forms, for permission to camp, et cetera, how they will be submitted in the future will change. Um, we generate too much paper, and while some systems will remain in a paper format because of necessity at the time, the, for instance, permission to camp forms um, may be paper for a little while, but you will no longer be required to submit four copies of those many pages. Um, after permission is given, et cetera, then if paper, paper copies are needed for different persons, then they will be generated as opposed to when the forms first come in. We continue to revise the adult training program to make it more user-friendly, and I will come to that when we reach the training. In October, we published the rules and regulations of the association. First time that this was done since we became an independent association. It is some, a task that was set out in the 1969 constitution, our first constitution, but um, it was never completed before last year. Um, I always thought it's something that should have been done earlier. And uh, while I still think that I could understand why um, successive administrations um, did not complete the task because it was a lot more difficult than I thought it would have been. In fact, up to now, we have not completed all aspects of what we intended to do with regulations and rules. In November, we amended this constitution to bring it in line with the country's move to republic and to fix up one or two minor um, areas where the best practices um, recommended by WISM had changed from when the constitution was written in 1969. Um, so we did those. However, we still need to do a complete review of the constitution. We had to do that then because we needed to change the scope promise um, from what it was, but we still need to look in, at a whole at the constitution. There are some aspects of it I think needs to be modernized. Um, and there are other aspects that best practices in scouting have changed as well, a little more drastically that we need to consider. However, this will not be. This review will not be something done by just the governance committee or the executive, but um, consultations will be held with the association to decide on what should go into the constitution, what should be changed, and what language should be modernized. And that will happen hopefully during the next school year. In December, we appointed a youth member as our first national youth commissioner. To my knowledge, he is the youngest person that was ever appointed to the national team. And as a member of the chief commissioner's team and the national executive committee, he will advocate for, on behalf of the youth members at the national level. 
In addition to that, he chairs the National Youth Engagement Committee, who is responsible for developing um, a national youth involvement policy for our association. It will be our first such policy. It is one of the policies that has been recommended from by Wisdom in recent times, uh, recent meaning a few years ago, not last year. Um, this policy will allow and encourage our youth members to be more involved in their environment, making decisions within the very, at the various levels at which they operate, and also um, having input into the direction of the association as a whole. In February, after advertising the new post, and I would like to say that all the positions that have been appointed since the team was first established, this current team, have been advertised across the association and some of them even outside of the association. After the advertisements went out, um, the persons who applied were interviewed and we appointed for the first time a head of safeguarding and a chair and a secretary to the National Appointments Advisory Committee. The head of safeguarding is responsible for continuously reviewing and updating our safeguarding policies and ensuring that they are implemented at all levels of the association. The National Appointments Advisory Committee will be the HR department of the association and they will oversee all appointments and reappointments, the whole process involved with both. And during this month so far, we have launched the celebrations for our 110th anniversary of scouting in Barbados. And we are celebrating 110 years of unbroken service to our country. That is a claim that few can make. And I think it's something we should be proud of and everybody should try to participate in the activities going forward. As the country reopens and we return to face-to-face -face at school, we now have to determine how we will return to face-to-face -to -face in scouting. We must be conscious of the national protocols for COVID-19, the protocols from our meeting places, whether it will be the schools or churches or community centers, wherever it is that we meet. And we must also look at the association's protocols, which are still in place, and make sure that when we do reopen, we do so safely. I don't know if anybody has any questions at this point. And may I state no, um, while we are having our discussions, if you have any questions, please raise your hand immediately. Don't wait till we are finished then to ask questions about what is happening. Does anybody have any questions with respect to what I reported there from what's happened in the last year? Yes, Sandra, go ahead. Hi, good evening. Right, just the last point that you made where the association will need to look at the reopening of the groups as it relates to uh, we are going face to face now with school. How about when, okay, the principals are asking you, when you, they are willing to let you restart, can we go ahead or we have to wait on the association? No, no, you don't have to wait on the association. You have, when I say that we, I'm speaking um, in the Royal We, not necessarily as headquarters, but each group and each district will manage the process based on their situation and the situations um, within their groups. Because you will have to work out, even though the principal may be um, happy for you to come back, um, in face-to-face -face meetings, you still have to look at what his restrictions are and what ours are. And you, the, you have to look at what the parents will allow as well before you can decide, yes, we are going to start back with face-to-face -face clubs. So the, the, the principal giving you permission is just one part of it, right? But you don't have to wait for headquarters to tell you, go ahead. But you will be, you need to work with your ADC or district scouter and keep them apprised of what is happening within your group. Yes, Thank you. Okay. Um, yes, I did not remember to say this at the beginning. 
If you have any questions, if you are watching it on YouTube and you have any questions, just ask the questions in the chat, the YouTube chat with the stream. Um, we have somebody monitoring it and they will relay the question to me if you post any questions inside the YouTube chat. Also, you can ask questions in the um, Zoom chat as well if you so desire, rather than come in live to ask your questions. Um, you monitor the chat, right? Yes, that chat is also being monitored. Any other questions? All right, I take it then that we can move along and we will get into the discussion period. And notice I said discussions and not reports. It is supposed to be back and forth. It's not just supposed to be me telling you what we plan. You are supposed to be giving feedback into those plans and having a say in what we are doing going forward. The first discussion is the BBSA development plan. Where are we? I looked at this and I decided to simplify this discussion a little bit because to go through the individual plan, plan point by point, I think might have taken a bit of time. So I decided to um, report on um, what um, just on the categories in general. And then if anybody has any questions specifically about a the category, then we can look at the, um, the specifics from the particular category. Let me just call it up just in case there are questions. All right, from the administration section, we have completed eight of the 12 tasks we set for ourselves, and there are four more that needs to be started. And those four are there for a GSA assessment by 2022, and that we intend to start that next month. Establish a calendar of events, including national and district events. Obviously, we, that is on hold until we reopen properly. You could say that, yes, we have it because there haven't been any events to schedule, but that would be a cheat as far as I'm concerned. We haven't been able to relaunch the website as yet. We are working on that and assistance is greatly needed in that um, area. Relaunching the site of itself is not that difficult, but it makes no sense relaunching the website if we do not have personnel to keep the information on the site up to date. And the last one was establish a committee to record and document the history of the association. Um, their goal would have been to publish the history of the association by 2022, the 110th anniversary of the association. We are hoping to get this off the ground next month. COVID put a damper on this one because um, we could not visit some of the people that we would have wanted to, to get the history and the details of their experience in scouting and some record some of the memorabilia that they do have. And that is something we're looking to start this year. We also are hoping that the volunteers from the Give Back program would have been the main persons in this effort. But again, because of COVID, we were limited in the number of people coming through the Give Back program. Youth program and training. We've completed four, sorry, four of the six tasks are ongoing and we have two to start. And the first of the two that still to start is encourage groups and, their, and thereby their members to become more involved in their communities. This, we obviously without the groups meeting um, physically, we could not um, put an emphasis on this. So once the groups reopen, then we will look at introducing that measure. And develop a program to re retrain existing, sorry, this one, that is that that has been started. Sorry, develop a program to retrain existing leaders on how to develop how to deliver the youth program to today's youth. 
sorry, we are developing that one right now. All the others are, have started, but have not been completed as yet. Here's a word. We've completed three and five to be, um, to be started. The first two being the established a schedule for maintenance of the grounds, and a schedule for maintenance of the building. These have not really been gotten off because establishing a schedule, we have to have the budget to go with it, and that has been on hold. The third item was enclose the property. A fourth was establish clear rules for the use of the property, including set user fees. And the fifth one to be started was acquire the necessary equipment and furniture to properly host events, i.e. folding tables, chairs, podium, basic kitchen utensils, equipment, etc., cetera, um, which would also be available for rent. Finance and support, we've started one, sorry, we've completed one, one is ongoing and there are two to start. Two to start is generate revenue through advertising on boundary walls slash fencing. Um, you have to enclose the property first before we can look at that one. And the second was expand the commercial activities of the scout shop to supply outdoor equipment to the general public and the rental of equipment for outdoor events. Um, this obviously had to put on hold because of COVID as well. Even if we were to have made the investment, we would not have been able to recoup any um, finances from it. And the last part of our development plan was recruitment and both of these obviously are still on hold because in the COVID period, made no sense. Um, Developing plans for these two. Actually, the plan we will have to look at right now is restarting our groups first and getting back some of our membership, um, having them return, and then we can look at getting the groups functioning properly. Then we can look at recruitment. And that is where we are at the development plan. I don't know if anybody has any further questions as far as that is concerned. None. Okay. 4B, safe from harm policy. What is it and how does it affect you? And to start us off, I am going to show a short video. Okay, there it is. Hey Scouts! You've probably heard somewhere about the world's safe from harm, either on national events or on the internet. Today, we're going to explain to you what this exactly means. Safe from harm is a group of action that was designed to make sure everyone in scouting is responsible and committed to protect children and young people inside or outside the movement to make sure everyone feels safe anywhere at any time. And for that to happen, we first must understand what harm is. Harm has different shapes. It can take form physically, psychologically, emotionally, and verbally. For example, to make fun and make jokes about someone else, it's called bullying, and it's a form of psychological and emotional abuse. Harm and abuse can happen anytime. That's why it's important for us to understand what it is, and most importantly, to know what steps we need to make so it doesn't happen. This is why Safe From Harm exists, to ensure that harm never happens inside scouting and to teach you how to identify any harmful situation. To keep scouts safe, our team of volunteers and staff are present all around the world to support your local group and to help you identify any safety concerns that you may have 
whether in scouting or outside of it. The Safe From Harm team works to ensure that scouting is a place where scouts are safe from any harm. We are present at every World event, such as the World Scout Jamboree, the World Scout Mood, and Jota Jody. We also offer online and live trainings for staff members, volunteers, and scout leaders in every region. But how can you contribute? You can take part by being a Safe From Harm digital ambassador and sharing this message with your friends and family, because raising awareness is the first step to create a safer environment for everyone. And with over 50 million scouts in the world, we need everyone to be a part of it and to practice Safe From Harm. So stay tuned for the Safe From Harm updates on our webpage and social media channels. Got it? Woohoo! Woo Okay. I think I should give everybody an introduction. We have a question before I continue. Hmm. In relation to... Oh, hold on. In relation to the revised booklet for beavers and cubs, how far along is it? Reason currently in the cubs booklet, there is the information technology badge, where most of the requirements are out of date. And also given that most of our scouts would have spent the last two years having online classes for school and scout. Right. Um the books right now are on hold, and that is because we are conducting a full review of our youth program. And therefore, it makes no sense editing the books now, updating the books now, to then have the update on the youth program completed, and then having to change the books once again to, to, to meet the requirements of the new program. So for the time being, we will we keep using the books that we have. The committees, as they deem necessary, I'm talking about the sectional committees, can make small amendments to badges as needed. They will need to make the recommendation um, to headquarters on the changes they would like to see in their programs. Um, I'm going to talk about minor changes, not major changes and they can be facilitated temporarily until the review is finished. With respect to the youth program review, that is scheduled to finish by September of this year. The process is actually a 12 month process um, the, that we are using for the region. And one of the reasons it's gonna take 12 months is because a process like this was never, has never been completed in Barbados. In the past, we have always imported programs from different associations, usually the UK, and then in later years, Canada and the region. So um, we were just taking parts of programs from different places and instituting it here. What we are looking at now is developing a program that is catered to our association. And the steps that have to go through for this takes approximately 12 months. The committee is a little behind right now, and I'm hoping that they will be able to catch up um, in what they have to do so that they can finish by the September deadline. Yeah. Okay. The person has asked, is the purple scarf, he said from harm one, because I see everyone in the video using it. Actually, the purple scarf that you see, um, persons at international events or videos from WISM wearing um, is actually the WISM scarf. All WISM staff and volunteers use the purple scarf. We use it at headquarters here, members of our headquarters team, right? But that, that scarf is only for use here. 
when we travel, we do not use that so that there is no confusion. Okay. Safe from harm, as you would have heard in the video, is one of WISDOM's key policies. And at last year's World Scout Conference, a resolution was passed that will make it, that will require all NSOs, that is National Scout organizations, to have their own safe from harm policy by 2024. Um, for us, this fits into our plans because it was in our plans to have one by 2022. So um, we will be well ahead of the 2024 um, deadline, even if we don't get it finished this year as planned. Basically, it states, basically what WISM states is, it is a priority for the scout movement to make sure all participants, especially children and young people, feel safe anywhere and at all times. And I would like to emphasize that safe from harm does not only apply to youth members, but to all participants, youth, adults, adults being um, members of the association, but also to visitors and other persons working with us at an activity. And the normal assumption is that safe from harm deals mostly with certain types of abuse, dealing with bullying, sexual abuse, things like this. And yes, it does, but Safe From Harm deals with everything. The whole environment at a scouting activity must be safe. That is what it states. Not just from things like that, but must also be safe physically, as in the location must be safe, the equipment that you are using must be safe, um, all necessary precautions must be made in all areas. Safe for harm is supposed to be covering everything. We decided to have our own policy by 2022. And the plan was to create a draft, circulate it for comment, have it approved, and then implement it. And I mean circulate a comment to all our members have it approved by the necessary bodies, and then we would implement it. The draft has been produced, um, the first draft. I have it, I'm, I'm going through it. I had put it on hold because I believe that the head of safeguarding and his team must have an input into the first draft of the Safe From Harm policy, especially as they will be the people who will be charged with um, overseeing the whole policy. So um, that committee it, um, has been established. There are the non-uniform people on the committee have already been assembled and they're in the process of being approved. And the uniform personnel from that, I hope to have joined the committee by the end of this month. This committee, let me say now, I mean, that's referred on, but since we are there now, we'll oversee safe from harm across the association. So on it will be members from each district um, because those members are responsible for making sure the policies are enforced in their districts. The persons who will be on the safe from harm committee from districts are not supposed to be members of the district team because they're supposed to be functioning separate and distinct from the district team because there are like the auditors when it comes to that. So you don't want somebody from in the team seeing if the team is operating correctly. All right. How does the say from our policy differ from our policies, our current policies? And the answer to that is, it is, it does not, it's not different from our existing policies. What it does is bring all of our existing safeguarding policies under one umbrella so that they can be updated, so that they can be enforced in a holistic manner, as opposed to 
uh, in an ad hoc basis for each individual policy. And for those of you who are aware, our current safeguarding policies, there are five of them. There is the safety policy, the vetting policy, the child protection policy, the anti-bullying policy, and the data, sorry, the privacy and data protection policy. If anybody is not aware of what these policies are, then I invite you to go to RNR. Um, for those who have not learned the acronym yet, but it's one we can use all the time, so I'll learn it. It should be off the tip of your tongue, like OPONR used to be off the tip of your tongue. Um, RNR chapter two lays out all the policies of the association, the five policies of the association, and it identifies what they are, and then it gives you the rules governing how they are to be implemented. Until we reach the stage where we have our own policy with our own certificate, we will continue to use the WISM course, which most, if not all of you have taken already um, for your registration last year. And I just want to remind all of you that that certificate you would have done, you see from harm certificate, is only valid for two years. And once it expires, you need to redo the certificate. Let me rephrase that. Before it expires, you need to retake the certificate and update the certification and submit it to your district. The training team is currently working on the courses on the various policies. Once completed, all existing members, both uniform, sorry, both members and associate members and other volunteers will have the opportunity to complete the requisite courses. Some of them will be online and some of them will be face-to-face. -face. Your role will determine the course that you have to complete. So everybody has to do an aspect of safe from harm because um, whether you are a youth leader or you are a member of a group executive or the national executive, then the privacy and data protection policy will apply to you because that will govern how you deal with the information that you received in your position, okay? The vetting policy will apply to you. Anti-bullying in a sense will apply to you, but it will not apply to you the same way for a committee member as it would for a youth leader. Although committee members could bully one another as well. So um, there will be some aspects in there, but depending on the role that you serve in will determine which courses you have to take. Once that is completed, We will circulate that with all the necessary information. There will be, um, the courses when offered will not be one-time courses. They'll be offered over a period of time. And therefore you will have the opportunity, more than one opportunity to complete the courses. However, a deadline will be given. Let us say the 31st of December, 2022. And that's another thing off the top of my head. I'm not saying that's what it is. And that I say each course will run three times between now and then. So you have three opportunities to complete all the courses by the 31st. And if you do not meet it by the deadline without um, a very valid reason for not being uh, able to complete it by then, then your appointment will be placed on hold until you meet, become compliant. For these courses, we'll be using outside instructors for some of the courses, um, especially as we will be looking to use persons who are trained in certain areas. Also, because of the number of people that have to be trained, it will be easier to use outside persons who will just be dealing with that one course than dealing with the people who are working on the other courses as well to add another course to them. And we are currently seeking funding for this. I've already identified a sponsor. Um, that I have to get back to on this. But once that is secured, 
then there will be no fee for any of these courses on this first go. Going forward, I cannot promise that. Any questions on Safe From Harm? Or any comments on Safe From Harm? All right. I think it, people didn't see the discussion part, but anyway. C, revised training policy. What is it? Who does it affect? And this will probably generate the most discussion, even if not today, you know, going forward, it will. We'll be making ongoing revisions to our training policy. The publishing of RNR has brought several of these things into being, um, or some that were in being, um, some that were there before that people did not realize. They are now there for everybody to see. And the, notion, the, the um, excuse of being able to say it before, I did not realize that was the policy, is now out the window. The notion that once a leader has completed their wood badge and have gotten their beads, that they, they no longer have to attain any kind of training is out the window. And they say notion, because all it was was a notion before, but that's what people believe. Or that if you only attain initial and explanatory, then you don't have to do any more courses that you can function as a leader. Because at that point is when you used to get invested. Or I don't wear a uniform, so therefore I don't have to go to any training. All of these things are gone. As long as you function within the association, whether you put on a uniform or not, you must receive some aspect of training. The fact that you are a parent helper who does not come every week and does not pay and do not pay a registration as a member means that you have no training obligations is false. Once you are dealing with boys in this association, we must be sure that you have received the necessary training to make sure that you deal with those boys correctly. Regardless, if you are a member of a group council executive and you are making decisions on how the group should function, yes, you are not a uniform member, but you need to know something about scouting. How can you decide on how a group is to function, the type of equipment to buy, the activities to go on, the funding for these things, when you have no idea of what scouting stands for or represents? There must be training regardless of your role once you are involved in scouting. Now, it does not mean that the, the group secretary will be right, required to go to Wood Badge. The Wood Badge course we run is for youth leaders. So no, they wouldn't go to that. But there will be training courses in parts of the initial course that you all would know, which tells you about scouting and how scouting was formed and what the principles of scouting are. They will have to do that course. They will have to do a course in um, management of a group so that they are trained for the position that they are holding. Okay? So there will be training across the board and I'm going to get to how we will decide which ones. The whole concept, excuse me. I don't want to start coughing because the two people here with me might start running. I think I got coughing. So, for new persons coming into the system, in the past, the first time headquarters saw a new person, a new perspective, 
is when they turned up for initial course uh, in quarters or whenever the course was over. That is not a thing at the past. Yeah. The first thing you do as a prospective leader will not be initial course. Any prospective leaders or members, um, I do not say that leaders, or members, because this will apply to care okay. helpers, group council members, executive members, etc. Um, council members play a little different role because they have to be elected but after the election for this process. You have to fill out either a membership application form, and that's for members and associate members, and then it's a volunteer form for people who will be volunteers without becoming members of the association, parent helpers, etc. That form is submitted to the line manager, which for most people coming in will be their personal legal or their unit leader. Okay, at the district level, it will be to the district. Quarters level it will be, but most people coming in is our group level, and that's where we'll go to the group scout leader. We'll sign off on it. Um, somebody saying they can't hear me. Others hear me, or it's just that person. We are in cheap, but somebody's going to mute. Can you? I hear what you're hearing now. All right. Um, the group scout leader will submit the form to the district who will send it on to the National Appointments Advisory Committee. Further down the road, once the committee has been established and we've broken into district ad uh, appointment committees, then it will go to the district appointment committee. What for now? We'll be doing it at a national level. It will come to National Appointments Advisory Committee. That committee will process the form. And by that, I mean they will consider the person, they will complete all the necessary vetting for the person in the position that they hold or propose to hold. And once that person passes muster, then they will be offered the position that they are applying for. And by that, I mean they will receive confirmation. Yes, you have been approved for this position, and this is what is involved in this position. They'll be told exactly what their responsibilities will be, and it will also list their training and other obligations that go with that post. And then they will be given the opportunity to accept the position or change their mind and refuse it. But once they accept, they will be accepting the obligations set out in the appointment. And part of that obligation will be training obligation, which for a youth leader will state that they must complete explanatory by six months that I say for instance I can't remember what it is if you go to table two in the last chapter of RNR you will see um, what are the training obligations for each position in the association and then it will further state that they are required to complete with badge by I'm guessing here because we need to finalize that once we've done all the courses. But for instance, you need to complete with badge by year three. And they will be appointed an um, training advisor who will um, help them along the way in their training obligations. That person may be somebody from the group or the district or headquarters. Um, but normally it will be someone close to where the person works so that they are able to keep better in contact with them about their obligations. Okay? Once the person agrees, they're going to get a temporary appointment. When they have completed that initial training, 
then they will receive their full appointment. So if you come and you get accepted and you don't finish the initial training, and when I say initial training, I'm not talking about the initial course now. The initial training varies depending on the role that you will play. So if you are a youth leader, initial training will involve the initial course and the explanatory course. For a group council executive member, it will be the um, initial AM course, AM being associate members course, which will be slightly different than the initial course for a youth leader. Okay, and that would be your only training obligation, that and GDPR. Okay, so it will differ depending on the post that you are in. Okay, so you will get that and that's what you agree to. So it means that if by year three, you have not completed with badge and you cannot give a good reason for not completing with badge or even almost not getting past explanatory, then we will say, obviously, this is not for you and we will have to part company. If there were, if there is something significant that prevented you from completing, obviously, then you will be given an extension to have it completed by. It's not hard and fast. We take into account different things, but you have to be making an effort to complete it. The bottom line we are saying is the only way you can deliver the youth program properly to our youth members is if you are trained to do so. It is so in everything else that we do. Everybody has to be trained for the position that they are in, not just in scouting. And therefore, we say to you, if you're not able to meet your obligations or you are not interested in learning about the program or how to deliver it, then you need to find another way to, to volunteer in scouting, another way to give of your time. But it cannot be as a youth leader. Part of the problem we have right now with our program is not the program, but the fact that it's not being delivered properly to our youth members. And we need to arrest that and reverse that situation. But I see I mentioned vetting there because every new appointment must be vetted. And vetting takes different forms. Some forms, it just means checking with the references. Other forms may be requiring you to get a police certificate of character, or it may even go a little deeper where you will have to have the security agencies verify um, that you are, um, that you have a clean record, depending on the position that you hold. It will not be only for youth leaders. If you are going to be the treasurer and we are going to give you the group's money to manage, then we need to know that in the last two organizations you were in, money did not go missing when you were responsible for it or anything of the like. Or you are coming to be a parent helper. Um, like what happens now? And we don't check you because you're not in uniform, only then to find out that there were problems in the last organization you were a member of and that you were mistreating the people that were in your charge, all right? That has to stop. Everybody must be vetted. There's a question here. No, if you are not completed in the three, the body has asked, if the word badge was not completed in a three year slot, will you have to redo all the beginning courses? No, not necessarily. It all depends on how much time has passed. If you completed initial and explanatory in 1999, you were with us in 2005, and then you left for whatever reason, and now you've come back in 2022, then yes, you will have to take initial and explanatory because things have changed in scouting 
since 1999. But if you did the courses in 2017, no, that's around 2019, so the three years are up now in 2022, we give you an extension, then no, you don't have to go and repeat what you would have done before. You need to complete the next courses in, um, in the order that, you, that needs to be completed. Okay, so it all depends on the length of the break. You have one too? Oh. Hmm? Okay, yeah. Any restrictions on the person's activity during that initial period? No. Obviously, they will be operating in a group with other leaders and their line manager, which is their unit leader, should obviously know that they are a new person and should obviously um, use their discretion in the duties that they assign to that person. I would like to say up front that we are moving to, if we are not there already, where you come in, fill out that form while you are have started a group or running a group, then come to initial and explanatory while you are still running that group. That needs to stop. You should not be running a group until you are certified to do so. And I'm not saying what level of training you have to reach. That's something we have to decide still. But definitely, you should have completed explanatory, even if you don't include introductory to it, before you are in that role. Because if you have not been trained, you cannot fulfill our obligations legally to manage boys at any scouting activity or event. You can assist in their management, okay? And the fact that you are a teacher at the school does not change that unless the school taken up full liability and it wasn't a scouting activity, it was a school activity, then yeah. And as long as the parents know that, then that's a different story. But when I have to call the insurance, our insurance, to tell them that something happened to one of our youth members, I have to be able to tell them, yes, the person that was in charge of the activity was authorized to do so. Otherwise, there will be a problem. So all of that has to stop. It means that if a leader leaves for a reason, regardless of what the reason is, and there is still a group, then the district has to appoint someone who is qualified to assist with that group until the new leader is trained. So yes, the new leader will work along with the body from the district and learn on the, on, on the go what is going on, but there must be somebody author, who is authorized to be responsible for boys in charge of that group in the meantime. For existing leaders, there are requirements as well set out in r, &R. The main one being that you're required to complete a certain number of hours of training to keep your appointment. This is in rule 325H and I, which states that following the award of a wood badge, the adult must complete a minimum of five hours ongoing learning per year, average over the length of the appointment. It is the responsibility of the adult's line manager to monitor completion of ongoing training. Ongoing training is defined as any learning achieved by the adult that can be applied to their scouting role. This means that every year you must stay, you must complete training. And I was looking at that wording and I don't like it fully. And there will be guidelines set for it. Um, in how many 
hours you can carry forward into the next year. It means that you have to refresh what you're doing on an annual basis, the same as a lot of professionals. It does not say you have to come and do a course that the association is offering to be able to renew, um, to have your ongoing training. So if you are a club leader and there's an organization offering a course in craft, you can go and do that course that is two or three hours, all right? And that can count as ongoing learning because what you learn in that craft course, you are gonna use with your cubs doing craft at your meetings. So that is considered ongoing training, right? And obviously any training you do, you have to provide certification, whether it's a certificate or something to show that, yes, I completed this course. You are at work and they want you to take a first aid course or CPR course for work, then that counts. You just bring certification to show to us that, yes, I did this. Okay? We had the training team has a pioneering workshop. You can come and do the workshop, and that counts as ongoing training. Okay? Any training that you do that can be applied to your role in scouting is considered ongoing learning. Okay? What is not intended, and I will have to make sure that this is worded correctly, is that you go and do one of the major first aid courses that is over a month and say, well, I did this course and this course is 20 hours of classroom time. And therefore I don't have to do any more training for the next four years because the average is supposed to be five a year. That is not the intention of the regulations. The intention is more that I did something that's eight and I can carry forward the three. So next year I can do two more with the eight I had before at 10 for over two years, that's five years, a year, five, year, five a year. That's the intention, okay? So it will have to be worded on the maximum you can do a year and carry forward. But there will be a fact sheet coming out explaining this in detail, and that will be in there. I'd like to remind everybody that you are required to have a Safe from Harm certificate. And yes, well, that course is only usually about 15 or 20 minutes, so it's not going to count much for the five hour thing that you have to do, but um, you have to have a Safe from Harm certificate. And all youth leaders, i.e. persons who deal with boys, are supposed to be trained in first aid. And the course that is required is what they call the first response course. Wait for our, our, our association, a first response, the first response course is a basic first aid course that we will do in-house. It will only have certification within the association and it will be free because everybody has to have it valid. And there will be a certain time period that that certificate is valid for. I cannot remember offhand what it is. But if you need to get it, well, for yourself or for work where you have to do a certification course, certified course, then you can go and do a certified course and that will count as your first year certification. But all youth leaders are supposed to have a valid safe from harm certificate and a valid first aid certificate. And yes, when you do that training, it will count towards your ongoing training. Reappointments. Once your appointment is coming to an end, you will be notified normally six months before it ends to let you know that on the 1st of August, 31st of July, your appointment will end. 
no, sorry, this is February, this is March, six months, sorry, the 30th of September, your appointment will end. Okay, I can't count, can I? <laughs> yes, yeah, we're back to July, sorry, 31st of July. Okay, your appointment will end. And you have to decide whether you wish to be reappointed or whether we will be part in company. Okay? If you wish to be reappointed, then depending on the role, you may have to reapply for the position. For instance, when my appointment comes to an end in 2025, I cannot be automatically reappointed. If I want to be reappointed, I have to apply for the position like anybody else. Okay? However, when your appointment as scout leader comes up for renewal, you do not have to reapply. You can just say to the district, well, say to the appointments committee via your line manager, yes, I wish to continue in my appointment. But whether you have to apply or not, you will have to be revetted for the role. So therefore you may be asked to submit certain information. You'll be asked to uh, submit an updated police certificate of character or a valid safe or harm certificate or renew your first aid or any of these things you will be required to do. Because let us be serious. You joined the association in 2000 and you were vetted, assuming you were, in 2000. That does not mean in 2022 that you still have a clean record. And as small as Barbados is, that doesn't mean that we know what you may have been up to in the last 22 years. Or actually, you may have been vetted in 2017, five years ago, but by now, your status has changed. And therefore, that must be taken into account before you are reappointed. Okay? So that is how reappointments will go. It's not just that five years are up, and yes, we will spit out another five-year war, five-year appointment and give it to you. Okay? I also want to draw to your attention Rule 325J. By the way, I'm speaking to the, the rules in Chapter 3 that, ref, that relate to training, but please note that there are similar rules in Chapter 4 and 5 um, referring to appointments at district level and appointments at national level. Rule 325J states, in exceptional circumstances, Scout headquarters may prescribe the ongoing learning requirements during a certain year for all or certain roles. In other words, when we complete a review of the program and change the requirements in the cub section of the program, headquarters can state that for all new reappointments in the cub section, the leaders must complete the course that the training team get, um, has available on the changes to the CUP program, okay? But it's not supposed to be every time you're replying that there are mandated courses per se, but there will be mandated courses when things change because the idea of this is once things change is for you to be aware of them and to receive the necessary training. Most of the training that will, that will be set up um, will fall into two categories. The basic training, most of it will be online with only the phys physical sections, um, the phys sorry, the physical sessions, the practical sessions, sorry, being um, face to face, but most of the theory will be done online. Okay, I, I see it there. All right, 
and you will be told which are which that you would have to complete. Apologies if dealt with before, but do non credential volunteers also need to from hard certificates? Yes. Any first adult who deals with youth must have a valid safe from harm certificate. The only exception being um, a guest instructor you bring in for a specific badge. But if you have somebody that helps you, not every week, but let's say it comes three times a term that is coming on a regular basis, then yes, they must have a valid safe from harm certificate as well. Because when anything happens, we must be say, we must be able to say, yes, every, all the adults that were there um, received the necessary training. When you start your training, you will get a link to the first course. It is not, when it will be um, using. YouTube our YouTube channel, but it will you will not be able to go there and just find the course and do it. It will not be in the public domain. You will need the link to get to the course. Once you get to, once you complete the course, there's a questionnaire at the end of the course, which you will complete and submit your answers. And once you have passed, um, it will tell you how much you got correct right away. But once we get that and verify it you will then get the link to the second course. So what is now the initial course, maybe two or three online components, and then the physical component. Because there's one course on me, there's one long online session, okay? And if you did not get all the necessary number of answers correct, then you can go back and take the test again. You can go back and watch the segments of the video that you need to review because you didn't get those questions right. It is not a one shot something, and when you feel it, you're done. That's not how it works, okay? And it will be available 24 seven. So if you want to watch the video during your lunch hour at work, you're free to do that. Not when it didn't work, because I don't want you to see that we get you fired. Um, or when you can't sleep at two o'clock in the morning, and you want to get up and do one of these segments then, you can do it then it is when it suits you that's one of the reasons for putting it online okay and therefore you you can be able to manage your time better any other questions on training i thought there would be more questions on that you know now people having issues with what i just said i want y'all to just hold in the end you know because if there are problems they need to be um ventilated and responded to All right, I take it as a no then. I feel like it'd be sure and I thought. Okay, item D, fundraising campaign. What is it and why should I support it? We are starting a launching a financial campaign shortly, fundraising campaign. It will be launched by the end of this week by hook or by crook. Even if we have to um, um, rejig what we are planning on doing and do it differently, but it will happen this week. It will be done by mail and by email. The idea is to mail out um, to our, some of our former members, prominent persons in the community, um, business places, seeking support for our projects that are upcoming. The intention initially was um, that we will not send out a letter that might be difficult to read because of the length, et cetera, that we will produce a two-sided newsletter in color with pictures and whatnot, showing what we do, um, identifying what we have done in the last year and what we are looking to do in the coming years. 
and telling persons why they should support these efforts. Okay, that's it in a nutshell. We've been faced a couple of problems and if they are not resolved, then we may have to um, go back to the letter format that was originally suggested and go with it in that stream if we are unable to get the other things worked out. But it will happen this week. This is very vital. As I said in our, um, in my report, we only have right now three annual donors. Okay? The government giving us our annual subvention. K. Shepherd and Company Limited and Price Waterhouse. Price Waterhouse, while we do appreciate their grant, $2,500, goes towards the uniform grant. Is not accessed at all at headquarters. The check comes into headquarters because it comes to the Barrios Boy Scout Association, and then it is paid over to the shop where it is used for the five dollar loan credits you get, and for certain uniform items that we may order that we need to subsidize the cost for. For instance, then we had to order a new size of female hats. We had to pay for the mold, which was quite a bit of money. And that grant was part of that grant, not the whole grant. Part of the grant was used to pay for the mold. The mold was like 200 US or 300 US. So rather than put that cost, additional cost, onto the hats, we used the grant to pay for the mold. Okay? Or there were other parts, the uniforms that we wanted to subsidize party costs, like when the belts go up. So we will do a lump sum to those to keep the cost within a certain amount. So even though we get that mo money from Price Waterhouse Coopers, which is greatly appreciated, don't get me wrong, it doesn't come to help us pay our bills. Care Shepherd money does, but Care Shepherd grant is a small grant, okay? In the scheme of things, um, we appreciate it because they've stuck with us and everybody know Two years ago, Kay Shepherd lost, made a big loss in their annual, um, they reported a big loss in their annual report, and that's one of the reasons why they divested from the duty free. But even in that year, they still paid their, they still gave us their contribution that year and the following year. So we do appreciate it from them. But regardless of the size, they've stuck with us when others have left. All right? But I think the government subvention is our biggest income earner, not earner, is the biggest set of income coming in, but it cannot meet all of our expenses. We've been lucky in the last two years where we have been getting our subvention in the current financial year. And that has to do with part of the BERT program because they have to keep their accounts up to date when it comes to these kind of things. But there was a time before when we get a check in March of this year, it is the money that we should have gotten March of the year before. So even though it shows that in the books that yes, we got some adventures, actually some adventures from the year before. It's one of the reasons why two years ago, we received two in the same financial year because they brought themselves up to date. But at least we get it on time now. But we cannot survive alone on that. Whether scouting is functioning or not, the utilities have to be paid. Yes, the electricity goes down when nobody's here, but whether we use the phone or not, the phone bill is the same every month. The bill for the internet is the same every month. The water bill, well, varies a little bit, but the minimum charge is still the minimum charge regardless. All right? The other bills that we have to pay, the insurance comes in, whether there are two groups meeting or 200 groups meeting, the insurance bill will come in. And that's a significant amount. So I don't mind saying, between what the shop pays and what we pay is $7,000 we have to pay every year in insurance alone. And we don't have as much insurance as I would like to have. 
but that has to be paid regardless of what comes in. And there are other bills like that that are not monthly bills, but every year have to be paid. Then we had the storm and tree branches fell here and there was one hanging over the house. So still had to hire somebody to come and cut the tree because you had to make sure that when it was cut that it didn't crash into the person's house and we had to look to replace the house. These are all bills that come up unexpected that we have to do. The grounds have to be kept clean whether there are boys coming out here to have activities or not. So we need to get in financing. And at this point in time, this seems to be our best bet. Because the reality is a lot of businesses in the last couple of years would have lost money. So they're not looking right now to give out. The other charities that we deal with, um, service clubs and things like that, for most of them, they were not meeting or we're not holding fundraising, so therefore they can't contribute to us like they normally would. Therefore, we have to do it on our own. And that's why you need to support it. Because even though that does not affect you directly in your group, it affects the management at headquarters, which will in the end affect you. Training cannot be provided to you without the support of headquarters. And even though, yes, you do pay for your training courses, it's not a full coverage. All right. The support given to you by the district and headquarters to the district require headquarters to be functioning at a certain level. And it can, we can no longer look at it as that is headquarters and that is the district and this is my group. And we all function in different spheres. And like if um, we are in different galaxies and we don't even see one another other than the pinpoint of a star out there on the horizon, that has to stop. The people that we deal with are stopping it because they are no longer given to scout headquarters and then a scout district and then a scout group. As far as they're concerned, it's scouts. They give the scouts already, so no more scouts can get. And therefore we have to find ways that we can work together to um, mm -hmm. secure this kind of financing. We have not, we have not done it in this time because one, we didn't have the resources to do, not resources, we didn't have the organization to get it done for this. But going forward, we must look at how we can involve everybody in our fundraising. So it means that if we have some kind of fundraising activity at headquarters level, then the districts will get a portion out of it based on the support that they give. And the groups will get a portion based on the support that they give so that we can all share in the funds being generated because we can no longer, for the most part, oper operate in all little spheres in anything big. So we have to look at how we think, and that's why I'm saying we all need to get on board with it. For this campaign, what was needed was who are we going to target? The names of persons that we can send these things to. And that has been like pulling teeth because the response back has been very limited. But we will start with whoever we have. And as we go on, we will expand the number. I think right now we have approximately 150 people to be targeted with the campaign. But originally we were looking at 300, but we've only gotten back responses to identify 100 people that we can tackle for assistance. And as I said, even though we'll be launching this week, it is still open for a submission of persons. So if you know of persons or organizations that 
you feel that we can tackle or that you can speak to them and say, well, look, something coming from your association um, or for a reason and, and, and putting that soft touch even before they get the official request and say to us, yes, look, I spoke to this person, um, send them, they're expecting one of the um, letters. Then please get in contact with us through our district or by sending us an email at headquarters and let us know who else we can add to this. Once we can get this up and running, we can look at getting the different groups and districts involved, not just in submitting things, but how they can benefit directly from it as well. Any questions on fundraising? I think there was a question. Is a question there? I'm reading a question here. That's what I'm staring at. Um, I was <clears throat> somebody was recommending that we have a calendar of training events so that people can plan. Yes, we will be doing that. We normally have one, um, but going forward, most of the basic training will be online. So you'll be doing it at your convenience. It's only when you get past the basic courses and get into the intermediate and advanced courses that you will need to schedule for physical activities. Somebody was asking about friends of scouting. No, there is no friends of scouting at this time. There hasn't been for some time. Last year, I made an attempt in reviving the Friends of Scouting. I um, put together some, a couple of people that I knew that were former members, who I thought knew people and would be able to get it up and running. Um, it was a small group. I asked for suggestions from within the district. And again, um, response was slow on that there getting people, not just finding a name to submit, but also getting somebody who was willing to work on the committee was thing. Um, the committee has not gotten off the ground really. Um, part of the problem I've had with that committee is why I had, it was four or five people who were interested in it. Nobody wanted to take the responsibility of leading the committee. And therefore without a leader, there was no chairman appointed at the end of the meeting or since then, and the, the, the committee has tended, has languished anything. I have made one or two attempts to get persons to agree to um, oversee it. But again, that has not happened as yet. Um, We've had some suggestions here for fundraising. Uh, somebody said, what about the dollar wall or sponsor sheets and take away lunch? Yes, these are all valid things, but usually for activities like these, we usually leave them to the district or groups to do. But yes, they're all valid um, things that can be done. Um, maybe in the, we can look at something at headquarters where we share with the individual persons. That's something we can look at as well. But um, I will pass that on to the finance committee. Let me say that we have a finance committee now that is responsible for the finance association. That doesn't mean there are people who spend the money or they're supposed to be people who raise everything on their own. There are people who are supposed to be managing, um, creating a financial plan for us and working out how we will get the financing. The committee is small at this time and are in need of persons to volunteer to help that committee. So anybody who's interested in that committee, um, we made the appeal before, I can make it again now. Uh, please submit your names to headquarters. I will pass them on to the treasurer and 
Um, don't think because you volunteer, it can be an automatic thing on the committee either. Um, like everything else, we think, but she will discuss it with you and see about where you can be on the committee. Somebody asks, what are we, how are we using the 110 anniversary for fundraising? Uh, meaning memorabilia it is something that we have considered. However, with the current um, environment, especially at the shop, I have not been um, looking to do that at this point in time. Maybe once we open and get more business in at the shop, um, then we can look at memorabilia. We would like to add that, yes, we do. Last time we had memorabilia was for the 100th anniversary. We did sell some items, but it was not to the extent that people may think we made from it. Yes, there was some money made, but um, it is something we have to look at to make sure we are not stuck with things at the end. My school is sponsored by an entity, Candy Scout Group, being incorporated into their sponsorship. Yes, I know. Um, it all depends on what is involved in by the word incorporated there and what the person would like you to do um, as a group. There are certain rules that must be followed as far as sponsorship is concerned. Some of them are covered in RR. With respect to that, I would recommend you. I would recommend that you ask your ADC or DC, and if they ADC or district scouter, and if they do not know, then they will check with the DC um, to give you further details on that. It is possible, but um, it must be done within the rules. Yes. Okay. Question asks, what is the role of the Finance Committee? The Finance, what, what, what one of our goals in development plan, establish a Finance Committee to develop and execute a financial plan for the association. This committee will have two submit committees, fundraising and sponsorship. The Fundraising Committee will raise funds through traditional means sales, events, property and equipment rentals, et cetera. And they will also use new and innovative methods like crowdfunding and virtual events. All fundraising will be for a specific stated purpose. Then the sponsorship subcommittee will seek sponsorship from government, commercial enterprises and NGOs to support the various programs and activities of the association. So far, the committee has been established, but there are no two subcommittees. I think at present, there are only five members of the committee. And so they are doing everything at the moment. They are seeking additional membership so that they can reach the point where um, they can split into the two subcommittees. The idea here being that, yes, it can be uniform or non-uniform persons on this committee. In the past, they were all non-uniform more or less, but we have changed the rules as far as that is concerned. So it is it's a combination of both. But the idea of this committee was not just to put quote unquote scout leaders on the committee, um, but put people that um, have some knowledge and experience in finance, both in sponsorship and fundraising, who can function um, as in getting the committee to meet its objectives. So yes, there can be scout leaders, but persons with experience in the relevant skills, skill sets needed. Any other questions? Item E. National committees. How many are there? Why should I participate? Outside of the Chief Commissioner's Council and the National Executive Committee, there are 20 
national subcommittees. Yes, 20. 14 have been established already. Two are being established as we speak. And there are four that are to be established still. Actually, it's 21 because one is missing from here. The established committees are the National Awards Committee, the National Governance Committee, Scout Shaw. All right, let me go back up and tell you what to do. National Awards Committee and National Awards Committee is responsible for overseeing the awards process in the um, association, awards as in um, awards for merit, long service, etc. cetera, um, for the members. There are the persons who review the rules and there are the persons who administer, um, who review um, the persons recommended and make the final recommendations to the chief scout. The National Governance Committee, there, this is a committee that was set up to deal with all governance issues of the association. That's a committee which reviewed the RNR, the draft of the RNR, and got it ready for distribution, and the um, the amendments to the constitution. And they are currently working on the information sheets that support the um, RNR. In specific, the one the sheets that deal with um, complaints, suspensions, and dismissals. The Scout Shop Committee, which is responsible for the management of the Scout Shop. National Finance Committee, I say what that does already. National Uniform Committee. Um, this is a committee that reviews the uniforms of all the sections and makes recommendations for the changes based on consultation that they would have done um, with the various sections and the, other, and the members of the association. They're the ones who are also assist in sourcing uniforms when they're recommending changes. National Beaver Scout Committee, which is responsible for the Beaver Section, National Cub Scout Committee, Cub Scout Section, National Scout Committee, Scout Section, National Venture Scout Committee, Venture Scout Section. Then there's the National Youth Program Committee, and this committee is the one that is reviewing the youth program that I mentioned earlier. National Communications and PR Committee, which is responsible for communica communications and PR for the association. The National Founders Day Committee, that's a given, the plan Founders Day and the activities ar around it. The National Training Team, which is made up of all the trainers and assistant trainers. And the National Youth, Youth Engagement Committee, which is responsible for developing and implementing a national youth engagement policy for the association. We are in the process right now of setting up the national safeguarding team and the national appointments advisory committee, both of which I mentioned before. And to be established is the national training committee. This will vary from the training team. Um, the training team is who plans out the courses, um, training to be done, etc. But the training committee is the team that is supposed to look at training as a whole and determine the types of training that should be completed in the association. Um, the training team more or less has, more or less does that right now, but we'll be looking to separate it. The National Operations Committee, which is a new committee on the set out in r, &R dealing with the operations of the association. The National Services Team, which deals with services, and the National Development Grants Board, which is a board that is supposed to look at providing grants to persons who um, cannot um, afford to be, to be part of the scouting program, seeking funding, not just providing support for them, but also seeking the funding as well to, to, to fund the grants that will be necessary. where you should participate. These committees can only reach their potential if there are a wide cross-section of persons on the committee. For some of these committees, in addition to somebody from headquarters, there are persons from each district. There are some committees that have people from each section as well. 
and then they, they are allowed as well to walk persons. But only by having a wide number of people, obviously you don't want it too big, don't get me wrong, but you need diverse people on it to bring different ideas and um, be able to perfect the areas that they are looking to do. For instance, the youth program committee cannot meet um, its goal properly unless there's input from all the districts, if there's input from the various sections, and then if there are input as well from certain key um, demographics in the community that we deal with, All right? So it's not just a matter of putting four or five people together to do something. And that is why we need people to be on the committees. There are several of these committees that have completed the task at hand and still have not been, and still have not been um, fully um, comprised because there weren't enough people to submit from the various groups. Sometimes I ask the names from, a, from districts and some districts will say, well, we don't have anybody right now who is willing to serve on the committee. And I'm not putting that to put in a bad light. The fact is that the persons available are limited. We have committees, we have people that are serving on two or three committees. And while that is not the intention, to say that they can't serve on a tree would mean that there's one less person on the committee because they're not taking a place that somebody else can take. No, they're, they're in a place that somebody can take. They're not taking a place that somebody else wants. They are there because there is nobody else to put there. And therefore, a lot of the committees struggle to meet the task at hand in the deadlines given because there are a lot of duplication. And we need to get more people involved um, to be able to get these committees to do the work that they want. That has to be done. Take fundraising. Everybody can give me fundraising ideas. And I'm not trivializing any ideas that may have come in in the past or even this evening. And I will get 10 or 12 ideas on fundraising events. But when we talk now about implementing them, who is going to implement them? Because everybody is ready to recommend ideas, but nobody is available to actually see them through. And that is part of our problem. And that's why we need people on these committees. But we are having less and less people coming forward. You know, I, I, I find it difficult because for as long as I have been an adult in this association, I can't say about when I was a youth member because it was a different um, demographic then. Because I was dealing with, I was one of youngsters dealing with other youngsters. But as an adult, I have heard of adults, leaders, committee members, executive members, complain about not having a say in what happens in the association. Decisions are made up top and passed down and nobody has a say. Nobody has an input. Appointments are made and you only know about them after they are made and people just pick the friends or the people that they know or the people from their district or people from their group and nobody else ain't got a chance. And these are all valid complaints, don't get me wrong. But we've come and we've changed things. And it's not that I met people change things. We agreed this is the way it should be done. So a post comes up and it's advertised across the association. And two people apply. Sometimes one person applies. And it's not that the skill set set out in the application process that where we list what we are looking for in the position that 
it is set like it used to be set before where only three people can apply because you have to serve 15 and 20 years as an adult leader or something like that. We've actually advertised positions where you didn't even have to have any experience. We advertised positions actually where you didn't have to be a registered member of the association. So that people can say we exclude them. Advertise it on Instagram, the Facebook, emails go out to all the groups, and two people apply. One person. That's a, that's a common something. Ask for suggestions, ask for opinions, and nobody responds. I've heard complaints for all the years I've been around about the uniform. From all sections, male and female. About some part, the hat, the skirt, the shirt, the pants, the shoes. Everybody got an opinion on some part of the uniform. We appoint a uniform committee. They send out questionnaires to the association, and in that I mandated, it was not only to adults. They had to consult youth members, they had to consult parents, group council members, everybody for inputs into the uniform. An outer association that back then was just over 2,000 people, I don't think they got 100 responses. If they got 100, it was just slightly above that. I, don't, I, I can't even say for sure how much I got from each section, if any. But yeah, I still hear complaints about uniform. But when we had, when you had an option to give your comments on the uniform, nobody answered nothing. We've received the, I've received the recommendations from the committee. The executive has looked at it and made and approved, as far as I remember, they approved the, the, the report. We have not implemented some of the changes yet because of COVID, because it made a sense bringing new uniform until people start buying uniform again. But when that roll out, I'm sure I'm going to hear things about that too. But we cannot, we cannot reach where we need to reach. On until, unless everybody gives their input into what is happening. I get the complaints. You know, I make the sense because when I give my suggestion, the boy listen to me. First of all, if you make that assumption, well, don't even tell me nothing afterwards because you didn't even try. And that certainly is not the scouting way. But I want to point out that all these committees work on a democratic process. And therefore they consider all the suggestions received and they make a decision and majority rules. So if you make a suggestion and it is not, it is, it is reviewed and most people don't agree with that suggestion, that is not gonna get put in place. That's the way it is supposed to be, all right? But you have to at least try to get a change done for what you want. And that can only happen if you are part of the process. You need to stop sitting on the fence. You should get off the fence and get into the game. Get out the bleachers and get on the field be part of what is happening. There are a lot of committees here. They do not meet every week or every month. Some of them are meeting now every month because they have a project that they have to get finished. But for instance, the Uniform Committee, after they made their recommendations, they have not met again. And they made a resume about six or seven months ago. And they will meet again when it is time to do the next review of the uniform or when there's a problem that they need to resolve. 
So if you believe you have something to contribute to any of these areas, then please send us an email, talk to your DC. Let your name come forward, right? But you have to get involved. Even if you're not able to serve on a committee, but can do something, help them in some area, then that is possible. They always need resource people for different activities. But you have to get involved. Your association cannot progress unless you get involved. As, as I'm on top of it, let's get involved. Let me go back a little bit to training. There are a series of training courses now available from the region and from WUSM. I get too many of them now. Before we were glad to see them, but now it seems every weekend there's something else. And we circ I circulate them, I know that for sure. Once it's something that is all available to the general membership, I circulate them. There are some courses that are only for members of the headquarters team. And I circulate that to them. But I like to encourage as many people as possible. When you see those courses available and there are something you are interested in or something that can help your group, you need to register for them. They are always free because they are virtual. These are courses that once upon a time to be able to attain, it was limited how many people from each association could go. You could only go if you could afford to fly to whatever country it was being held in and be able to pay for a hotel for the week or weekend or whatever it was and pay for your meals and all of that and the course fee. No, it's all free because you can do it from the comfort of your home. Make use of those opportunities. However, if you are interested and the deadline is Friday, you cannot go on Thursday night to register. Well, you can, but you're going to run into trouble. Because one of the things you have to upload is a certification from your association. That is something from the chief commissioner or the international commissioner saying that, yes, Person X is a member of the Barbados Boy Scout Association in good order, in good standing, and can do the course. Okay? But again, when it first started, we used to get a lot of you, but no, the boy don't seem to be doing any courses. But I advise you, these, these are only going to be available for a time. There will be a time when we get back to face to face courses, and you, unless you're going to fork up that money, the opportunity will not be available. So make use of them now. There were some questions, Marty? Oh, not really. Yeah. Uh, we have some people have, um, saying about things that they have looked at. And somebody asked if we ever considered leasing a section of headquarters land to a farmer. No, we have not. Um, it would all depends on the area anybody be interested in. And the problem with that is security. That will be their biggest problem and our biggest problem. Any other questions to deal with the committees? All right, moving right along. Item F, trees for the world. We plan in 2020 to launch trees for the world. Not we planned, we actually did. We did a tree planting and all. Um, the government had a plan to plant. I can't remember how many trees it was, no. A million trees, yes. And then we had COVID. And then we reopened for a couple of months and 
we said, all right, back the trees for the world. And before I looked around twice, we were back in lockdown again. Trees for the world is still on. Let me just say that up front. Even though the badges will say Trees for the World 2020, they are still valid because we cannot scrap those badges, shred them, and throw them away. That's a waste. Okay? If you want to get a marker and change your 2020 to 2022, all power to you. Okay? But we will be using those badges still. On Wednesday, last Wednesday, no, two Wednesdays ago, on the 9th, we, we launched, in a sense, we, um, give me a minute. Um, yes, we relaunched on the 9th. Chief Scout and I planted two trees here, two mahogany trees here at Scout headquarters, the March 9th anniversary, the 110th anniversary of scouting in Barbados. And as groups reopen, I'm encouraging you to start. We, we as scouts participate in tree plantings on two or three different occasions over the last two years. And later this year, we are going to we are planning a big tree planting. I'm not sure yet when we will do it. Um, but probably once we come in, we go dry season into the rainy season. That's what was adv advised last thing. But on a, an occasion or between a couple of occasions, to plant 110 trees to commemorate the 110th anniversary of scouting. Not that we will plant 110 trees during the year, but on that particular activity, not necessarily in the same location, we will plant 110 trees. But I am encouraging every group to get involved in the trees for the world. It's just not a scouting activity. It is actually something for the environment and Sustainable development. I don't have to say anything more for that. That's in the news all the time. All right. And I would like to encourage persons to look at planting trees at home or in their communities. But let me say that when you plant it in the community, make sure you get permission and that you plant it where it should be planted. You don't plant it on the power line or next to a light pole or Next to somebody house who don't want a tree, and next week you pull it up, um, plant it where you have permission to plant it. But I want us to do that more visible in the communities that we serve um, to do these tree plantings. So that even if it is not publicized in the press, the people in our communities will see us planting the trees. Somebody's asking the question, if this badge is for leaders or for boys, the badge is for everybody. That includes group council members and group executive committee members and national executive committee members. Get the badge as a souvenir, they can't wear it. They ain't got the uniform to wear it on, but anybody who plants two trees and document it and provide that evidence, is entitled to purchase the badge. And the badge is usually sold at a subsidized price. I cannot remember what it is right now. I believe it is $2, but I don't, don't, don't quote me on that there. Um, I want the people in the shop to be at my truck for that one. All right? Um, somebody was saying they planted, they didn't get. As I said, you have to document the planting of the two trees and submit it to headquarters, submit it to the shop or the headquarters, the evidence. Um, and please note, to get the badge, the, the person has to plant two trees. If the kappa plants two trees, 
the Kappa will get one badge. I know how they're going to decide which of the boys can get that, or if they're going to take turns wearing it every week, or what. But it is one badge for every two trees. You guys are how many people plant them? Okay. Uh, your scouts, I'm, I, I am expecting you to be honest and that you don't submit the same tree for more, two trees for more than one body. Okay. Any other questions on trees for the world? No. All right, item five, any other business? I can start this one off because there's one event, and that is the social event for leaders that was touted um, at Founders Day and in my correspondence. The Scouters Social will be held on Saturday here at Scout Headquarters. We are working on the ground so that it will be. Um, It will have a different look than how you would know it, as in how we plan to decorate it, lights in the trees, etc. But it is supposed to be a casual social affair. It is not a uniform activity, and it's not activity wear either. All right, it's a social. Very close. Um, not too revealing. It's still a, it's still something at school headquarters involving school people. So. I think that says everything I want to say as far as that is concerned. Um, but it's a casual event. I, I would say elegantly casual, but some people just go off the word and say ele elegantly casual. But dress comfortably. It is a sculpture's social line. So you need to walk with your chair, your cup, and your preferred beverages. Because it is free. There is no charge. Okay. Um, there will be a number of activities ongoing. There will be some short movies showing. Um, it was supposed to be drive-in. I don't know if it'd be still drive-in or whether you would space out your chairs and watch it. Um, we're still mapping out the grounds exactly how we're going to lay out. Um, there will be karaoke. There will, there's a, a quiz that you do. On your phones, there's supposed to be some not quiz type activity. There will be dominoes and cards and drafts or whatever else you wish to bring um, going on. All this will be going on basically at this regular, more or less at the same time. Not the carry work in the movie, but the, the, the dominoes and whatnot will be playing all night. Um, but you don't even have to play them. You can sit down and socialize. The idea is to provide an environment where the Leaders of the association can interact with one another on a social level, regardless of their role in scouting. So they end up being a commissioner and leader and assistant leader and newbie and OLB and whatever. It will just be leaders there. And this social, this time, is for the uniform members, by the way. Uniform members of the association. I'd like to encourage everybody to come out. There will be food. I am tempted to say what it is going to be. I, 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 I know what is promised. Um, I can go ahead. Okay, we're still not to say anything yet, but there will be food, right? Um, by free. So that could give you an idea, right? Um, Amy, you can be hungry or you can get a little scoop of something, all right? But if it's free, you can't come expecting the world either. We will be asking leaders to make a contribution. We did not set a fee because we said that even if we set a small fee for it, there will be some of us who are unable to make that fee because of their current financial situation. And we did not want to rule out anybody. So on the night, we will take up a collection to help offset the cost, or if you want to submit it beforehand, then you are free to do so at the shop or at the office, 
or if you wish to contribute something towards what is going on, as opposed to not monetary note, or you have a tank you're willing to lend us, or you know something like that, or to help prepare the food or something, so then talk to your DC, and they will put you in touch with a member of the planning committee, or you can send us an email at headquarters at barbadoscopes.org. Okay, because we just talk finances, so you know, you know, unlimited budget to plan this event. But um, I don't think we can let it pass as well. I think it's an important thing for us to get to know one another outside of official activities. It is on Saturday, the 26th of March, that is this Saturday, starting at 6.30 p.m. And it is until, all right? We will not be chasing out anybody and making them leave at a certain time, unless the police tell us we gotta do that. The loud music permit obviously will have a time period on it. So once that period has been passed, the music will have to be lowered. It won't be turned off, but it will have to be lowered. All right? The karaoke, et cetera, will go to a certain time. Our food, will only be served, I think, up to 10.30 or something like that. In other words, don't expect to come here at one o'clock and because people still lame and are playing dominoes, expect to get a plate of food. Well, if things left back, yes, you will get a plate of food, but they're not guaranteed that we're serving food for the whole night. They're not unlimited larder in the kitchen downstairs that we can just keep pulling food out all hours of the night. Okay, so let me understand that up front. All right, we will provide ice. We will provide a few soft drinks. Now, as I said, few um, money limited. Part of the problem of this is we do not know how many people are coming. If people had to buy tickets, then we know exactly how many people are coming. And people in this association don't like to say up front what they're doing. But I am asking you if you are planning on coming or the leaders in your group, please let your ADC and DS know so that by Thursday we got an idea of how many people can turn up here and we know how to cater. All right? There will be a couple of tents because obviously if the rain sprinkles, we can't get this, let the sound system get wet or the food get wet. Um, I can't promise tents for everybody. So if you learn how to look like a treading, you are a scout. Be prepared. Walk with your umbrella or your poncho as well. Or take a little shower. One or two. Um, we will provide some dominoes. We will have tables, etc. But you can bring your own as well. Um, that way we cannot run out of enough. We won't, we won't run out of anything. Any of the games that can be played. Or any other game you feel that can be played in the current setting then you are free to think. I let you know it is outdoors. Let me clarify that. That's the meet so that we meet the current um, regulations for COVID. The monitor unit came and gave their permission for the activity, um, but we will still have to follow the protocols. It means that at, when you enter the event, at the one, we will set up a station where you will have to be sanitized and contact information will have to be taken. But we should have everybody contact information so it'll be a matter of identifying yourself and your group and get your hands sprayed and then you, you join the group on the below field. Parking will be done by the gate and the above field. And as I say, come socialize. If you don't want to mix, you can come and sit down and watch the movie and then pick, pick up your chair and go home. That means nothing to stop you from doing that. Nothing says you have to be here till from 6.30 to 6.30 the next morning. You can't 6.30, if you're ready to go home, it's 8.30, then go home. But at least come and, and, and mix with a couple of the leaders. You ain't going to come and hug up nobody or drop under them or anything. So um, you can keep your distance and still talk with people. When it's called, people don't talk soft, so it's not a matter of having to be up onto somebody to hear them. You can keep your social distance and still hear what the body got to say. All right? 
Um, so I would encourage you to come and be part of the activity. Um, you will require to come with a mask as well, but obviously at the time you are eating and drinking, you don't have to wear a mask at that particular time. But please walk with your mask and when you can, wear it as well. We don't want the social to be some kind of super spreader. All right? So what do you think? Um, part of the reason, that well, it wasn't the reason, but it worked out good, is for there not being a fee is, if there was a fee, there would have been more restrictions as a NCF would have had to get involved and you might have to show a COVID test to come in, et cetera, those kind of regulations only apply to events where a fee is being charged. So we do not, we do not fall into that category. We just have to take contact information and sanitize. But I'd like to encourage everybody to come out even if it's just for a short while and think. Huh? Yes, and we will be using the bathrooms outside um, for this event. As you are aware, um, Wilkie Kamabach has four classes here using the auditorium and the mezzanine. So we will not be using either. You know, I'm gonna make them move the furniture and everything and then go put it back and sanitize and everything after the event. We will only be using the kitchen and the rest of the building will be locked off, okay? So we will be using the bathrooms outside and for now we may have additional bathrooms, as well. we may have additional toilets when the committee meets, but that's, a re that's one of the reasons we need to have an idea how many people are coming um, so that we can plan that aspect properly. Are there any questions about the event? I didn't leave out anything, right? Nothing. Well, I hope I see you all next week. Yeah, not uh, this week. Sorry, this Saturday coming. Yeah, it's less than a week away. Six days away. All right. Does anybody has anything else to raise on the any other business, or want me to address anything that I forgot to address? Um, one other thing is international events. International events have restarted. And I have received several invitations to events, so events, um, not world events, but happening all over the world. Some are regional, some are uh, national events where they're inviting people overseas. I have not circulated many of them, but if there are any, if there's anyone who is interested in um, completing, sorry, attending any such activities, um, you can let me know and I can let you know where they are and what the requirements are to attend. Part of my problem is with these activities is there is the COVID situation in the, in the various countries. I mean, a lot of countries are relaxing their protocols, but that does not mean the number of cases are coming down. And if you're gonna be traveling to some parts of Europe, well, certain parts of Europe now obviously can be out for most people because of the war, but um, you're gonna be traveling to Europe or as far as the Pacific, because I received invitations as far as the Pacific. You gotta be sure about the conditions when you get there as far as COVID is concerned, you will have to be able to make um, alternate arrangements. If you leave and you get to uh, uh, a transit city and then there's a, a lockdown because of COVID or something of the like, and you are stranded somewhere and can't get home, all these are things that one has to take in consideration. And one of the reasons why the association as a whole is not really looking at this at this point in time. But as I have said before, anybody who can meet the criteria that we have set to attend regional and international events and are interested, 
and we are sure that they can safely travel to the event um, within their group or otherwise, then I don't have a problem with them participating. But it's not just, yes, I want to go and you can go. But if anybody's interested in the invitations that have been received, you can get in contact with myself or the international commissioner and we will share the information with you. You can send the email to the international commissioner at international at barbadoscouts.org. Okay, there are a couple of questions here I see. At this present time, there are, there's no change in the criteria for events, international events, but um, depending on the, attempt, the type of activity, it may count as a regional event, even though it may be outside of our region. It depends on the type of the activity it is. Somebody's asking about the police certificate of character and the other courses that we mentioned. The deadlines for those will come out as they come into being. I'm hoping that by next month, a fact sheet will be, sorry, information sheet will be published with all the regulations as far as is for appointments. And in that will be the thing. For those existing leaders, you will not be required to produce a police certificate of character if that is required for your position until it is time for your reappointment. So um, it's not going to be like safe from harm where we said for safe from harm our registration last year, everybody had to submit a safe from harm certificate. Things like police certificate of character, et cetera, will be done on a reappointment basis or for new people when they are joining. All right, and the other courses will all be given a deadline when they are issued. Did I mention camping? No, I have not mentioned camping. If you mean our weather is allowed, um, you will have to check the protocols and see what is in. Um, at this time, as far as I know, it is not allowed, but the, I, I have not checked the last, um, protocols that came out fully. Um, Fabian, maybe you could answer that one for me. Oh, sorry. Somebody just answered it. If Marty just answered me, no, camping is still not allowed. Yes. Somebody's answering some the details for the social. Yes. It, the flyer should be out already. If not, it will be out this evening. And further details on the activity will go up by tomorrow, as long as I have confirmed some certain things with the planning committee. The other questions or other topics to raise? Or somebody had asked if there is a limit on the number of trees a group can plant. No, there isn't. If you could plant a million yourself, then you could plant a million yourself. Um, and not being facetious and being serious. There is no limit on the thing. Obviously, a person will only get one badge. Um, so don't think you can plant six trees and then you three badges and you'll put three badges on your uniform. Mm -hmm. It's not going to work. So the other ones would be extra, but it's still for one badge. Any other questions or comments? Nothing else to raise on the, any other business? All right, folks, I think you get home before dark. All right, I'd like to thank everyone for taking the time for being here. Um, the stream will be up on YouTube there that you can go back and watch it. So anybody in your group who was unable to attain today and can go back and watch the, the recording of tonight of today's town hall. And if they have any questions, they can send them in. Or if you remember, if you have any questions after now or think about them later on, send them in, talk to your ADC or district scouter. Um, your DC or feeling that 
send us an email at headquarters at barbadoscopes.org. All right. Um, there was one other thing that I thought would have come up and still hasn't come up, but I would like to encourage all the members to said it before, and I know people haven't done it, but as we start to reopen, I would encourage everyone to read chapter eight of RNR, which deals with activities and the rules governing um, how activities are to be held. So I would encourage everyone to reach out to it, all the unit leaders, especially, and all the group scout leaders, and all the district personnel who will be the persons approving activities. Please check the activity rules, especially when it refers to activities that you will be doing yourself. Please note activities will be in two categories. And we are talking about adventurous activities now. There are rules for all activities, but when it comes to adventurous activities, there are two sets of rules. There's one set where you have an instructor from outside who is qualified and what is required. And then there is another set of rules that apply to if you are conducting the activity yourself, and what certification you need to have to be able to do that activity, even if you used to do it for the last 50 years as a leader. Okay? So please make sure you read the chapter so that if you have a problem at activity, you're not going to find that you are outside the regulations. And anything happen, you are then liable as opposed to I being liable. Okay. All right. Thank you all for coming and taking the time. And huh? oh yeah, sorry if you get to take the picture. So if everybody could turn on their camera, give you a couple of minutes to do it. All right, you can go give me a time because, all right, that's one. Uh, uh, hold on, I, I lost my view. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. I guess I'll do it again. All right, thank you everyone. For being here and As I said, if you think of anything else you want to bring up, please raise it because the event will, because the event is over does not mean you still cannot contribute. For those of you who are not at home, get home safely and enjoy the rest of your night. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Bye, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Good evening all. Good evening all. Good evening. Bye.